New interesting details have emerged about the high-profile defeat of a large convoy of the Wagner Group in Mali, Africa. The Russian militants were traveling with the country's junta north to seize gold mines. This was reported by Transparency International Russia. The operation turned into a colossal failure. The group encountered fierce resistance from the rebels and was almost completely destroyed. Some of the Wagnerites and Malian soldiers were taken prisoner. Russian mercenaries in Africa are attracted primarily by commercial interests. The Kremlin provides military support to friendly regimes, strengthening their power, and in return, Russia gets access to natural resources, often bypassing local laws. T.I. writes, This was the case in Mali, where Russian mercenaries tried to help the local junta seize gold deposits in order to ultimately receive a share of the profits from gold mining. Information about the defeat of the Wagnerites in northern Mali appeared in early August 2024. It was reported that Tuareg rebels had set a trap, as a result of which 84 Russian mercenaries and 47 Malian soldiers were killed. Among them was the administrator of the well-known far-right Z channel, The Grey Zone, Nikita Fedyakin. There were persistent rumors that some unknown Ukrainian specialists allegedly helped the Tuaregs defeat the Wagnerites. However, no evidence of this ever appeared. Recall, in July 2024, a large convoy of Wagnerites was ambushed in Mali. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that they were also involved in this defeat. Among the dozens of Wagner soldiers killed in a deadly battle against Tuareg rebels in the Malian desert were Russian war veterans who had served in Ukraine, Libya and Syria. The defeat cast doubt on the ability of Russian forces to be more effective in the region than Western troops. Reuters managed to identify 25 Russian mercenaries who were ambushed in Mali. Two of them presumably survived, but were captured. Among these people were experienced fighters who had survived, among other things, the Bakhmut meat grinder. Relatives of the liquidated militants told journalists that the bodies of their relatives were simply abandoned in the Malian desert and no one was involved in their evacuation. In Wagner, these militants are listed as missing in action. Complaints from families to Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and the Russian Defense Ministry were ignored. It is known that during this battle, Wagner's losses amounted to 84 fighters killed. Also, about 47 Malian soldiers died there. Taiwan may have become one of the biggest supporters of the Ukrainian Air Force. Former Pentagon official Tony Hu said Taiwan gave the Ukrainian military its surplus Hawk anti-aircraft missile batteries. According to Forbes, Hu's comments confirm previous claims about a US-brokered deal between Ukraine and Taiwan. It is stated that Taiwan's MIM-23 homing all the way killer missiles, as well as their launchers and radars, will complement additional Hawks donated to Ukraine by the United States and Spain. The Ukrainian armed forces can now deploy up to 15 Raytheon Hawk batteries, each with at least six launchers with three missiles and associated radars. At the start of the full-scale war, Kyiv had about 50 SAM batteries, mostly S-300s and other Soviet models. According to the publication's calculations, Hawks could make up a third of the Ukrainian Air Defense Force's weapons. Although the weapon is more than 60 years old, it is simple, reliable and highly mobile. The Hawk is easy to upgrade and works well against slower drones, cruise missiles and manned aircraft. Its munition is also compatible with the US-Norwegian NASAMS air defense system, which Ukraine also operates. Last summer, US officials negotiated with their counterparts in Taiwan to buy back about a dozen Hawk batteries from the 100 or so launchers that Taiwanese forces began decommissioning in 2015. At that time, a large shipment of Hawks were intended to help Kyiv resolve a looming crisis as the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces moved towards the inevitable exhaustion of its S-300 missiles and BUK SAM batteries. Since then, Ukraine has integrated a wide range of foreign missiles, launchers and radars into its air shield. The more different SAM systems Ukraine operates, the more different missile stockpiles and production lines it can use to arm those systems with replaceable missiles as they fend off near-daily Russian missiles and drones. Dozens of countries use or operate Hawk batteries. Ukraine should be able to supply hundreds of missiles with or without direct US involvement, Forbes notes.
it is added that the Hawk is not in the same class as the best Ukrainian SAM system, Patriot, which has a range of up to 160 kilometers with an onboard radar homing system. The Hawk can strike at a distance of up to 50 kilometers or so, homing in on energy from a grounded radar reflected off an air target. The main drawback of this system is that its radar is susceptible to jamming. However, this can be solved by integrating older missiles and launchers with a better radar from NASAMS.